Hello everybody. Happy hump day. This is a little impromptu thank you. And today is our, I keep saying our, our six month anniversary of nomading full time. April 1st was my one year of van lifing in the driveway due to the damage to the house from the previous storms, old age, and the new damage from Hurricane Ian and Nicole. Uh, and I really wanted to give a heartfelt thank you to everybody who stuck through the no days of data, the no data plans. And now we have an abundance of data, but it seems AT&T one of the discounts, which would be the business discount, and I think it's because I don't have a LLC or a um, non-for-profit number, which I can get if I want to. I can apply to get a, a non-profit. That looks better. Number, and try and do that again. So. This afternoon I'll find out just exactly how much this is going to cost me because the little issue we're going to have here is that next Thursday I have to get the van fixed. I'll have money to get the van fixed, but I'm not sure which day we'll be able to get it done on. I'm hoping it's not going to take a month. I'm going to call this afternoon and see if I can make an appointment for Thursday. Uh, but I really just wanted to say thank you. You probably don't think that your comments mean much or that we really don't read them. We do read them and they do mean a lot because for every comment out there, there's a person behind it who is supporting you, who is going through what you're going through with you. And the advice and the warm wishes and the lovely words of encouragement have I don't think we'd really be able to get through this without you guys I mean sitting here talking to a camera all day may seem easy but it really isn't this is kind of hard you know you're putting yourself out there your thoughts your feelings your life and for other people to sit and criticize what you're doing when if we turn this camera around on those people I'm sure we could find plenty to pick on them about so I think it's disgusting the way that things are going on on, on YouTube where people just venting whatever they feel like saying about other people or commenting on, on things. I read all my other uh, people that I'm subscribed to's videos and some of the hateful, horrible things that are being said to these people is just ridiculous when their whole reason for doing this, it, there are numerous reasons for doing this, but most of them is just circumstance. You know, people have no money. There's no affordable housing. Someone lost a spouse. I lost the love of my life. The person who I thought was gonna take care of me till the day I died at home. Gone in a moment. In one minute, gone. Changed my entire life around. <clears throat> Lucy missed the mouse. That was the last domino falling off that pile, I'll tell you that right now. It's been a rough two weeks. I'm getting used to the silence. Trying to find other things to fill my day. Do a lot of walking around the stores now. Just to stay <clears throat> just to stay cool. But you guys being there kind of makes it bearable, if that makes any sense, you know? Just showing what we, we deal with all day. You know, right now, the car is falling apart after I spent 
I don't know how much money overhauling it to make sure this didn't happen. The one thing that I left and didn't do was the battery because it still, I thought had another year to go. But the bad connectors and the bad wires and everything dries out here in the salt. I got a year, almost got a year and a half out of it, which isn't bad. Uh, so that's where we're gonna start with the repairs. I'm sorry, people keep walking past and <laughs> looking in the window. And that's another part of van life that people don't realize. It's like, yeah, we're living alone in our van and we're out on the street and we're in the park and we're doing our filming and the Walmart thing. And I'll be doing some more of the Walmart shopping videos and the daily activities. Uh, some places I'm going, I cannot film, which is the library. Um, Monday, I have a really big test coming up. I haven't had it done for a little over two years now, right, right before Richard passed. I had went for this test and it was truly awful. It's a bone density scan test um, because of the overabundance of high yield radiation I was exposed to twice within an hour at such a close proximity to only being a quarter mile away in an unobstructed view standing right across the river from the towers. If you saw the video that I had put up, my view of Towers 1 and 2, it was a short I just put up. That's exactly what happened. That plane flew right over our heads exactly the way it was in that video. That, those explosions did the most damage to me along with the chemicals in the, in the cloud and, and the burning for nine consecutive months that I worked down in between the wash stations and the triage stations until the end of the digging for survivors or we, there's no other way to say it because this is not made for children, body parts. We were looking for anything of anybody that we could get DNA out of. Uh, once the last of those men were done digging and most of the demolition was pretty much done as far as taking everything for you know evidence and you know the government took away for inspections it just ravaged my body And having one doctor explain that to you is one thing. But while I laid on the table waiting for her to get the results and print everything out, as she, was, she actually showed me as we were scanning what was going on and how horrendously bad it really was. Uh, that was one thing. She came back in the room with five other doctors to try to explain what happened to me and what my future held and it was not good it was not good I'd have rather gone back to the breast and the lung doctor right now I haven't been filming because my left breast which is the one I burst the cyst in which started the spread um, is acting up again I look like I sunbathed with no top on. They are bright red. I sent the photographs to a female subscriber who was not with the breast cancer, but who had cancer. To show her what was happening and why I haven't been on for a couple of days, I had to go back on those giant chemo horse pills again because if you can see the bulging vein I have an excess of blood in my veins again that's deep vein thrombosis you see all the bulging veins in my hands that goes all the way up my arms my neck over here the main artery is actually bulging out uh, 
I have two to three times the amount of blood I'm supposed to have, especially running down this arm. I have a problem with my right arm with the circulation. Two years, three years ago, three years ago, they asked me if I would consider amputating my right arm, which is my dominant arm, so that it would make the blood flow easier. They thought that this would maybe solve some of the issues because with deep vein thrombosis and having too much blood that is too sticky from having polycythemia vera, which is a leaking of bone marrow, which is where we're getting back to the on Monday. My bones are disintegrating at a rapid rate. When the bones disintegrate, the bone marrow seeps out. They're basically turning into looking pretty much like my sweater right here, my little shirt, a million little holes. When I broke my foot, they couldn't even find enough solid bone to put a plate, pin, or screws into. I had to walk for the rest of my life now on two fractured feet that never heal. Every time I fall or I misstep or step on a rock, I crack one of those little bones in the foot and there's hundreds of those uh, and it's quite painful. I have to be very careful when I walk and where I step. Now, the test revealed a lot of scary stuff which the most scariest are two things. The third I could deal with was the top two that are pretty much scaring the crap out of me and my doctor and why we're going back. I have tumors and lesions growing on my neck from here down to my shoulders. From my shoulders down to my hip bones are more tumors and lesions and cysts. They are centered on my central nerve system. I have hardly any feeling in my hands and my feet because they're pressing on nerves, which gives me a numb sense all over. Sometimes the whole back of my head goes numb. From here down to my chest will go numb if I turn my head and I could sleep and wake up like this. And I'm stuck like this for days at a time. And we thought it was uh, the car accident I was in right before the first 9-11 in 1993. Sad to be mistaken, <laughs> it wasn't the car crash that's been causing the issues. My bones are deteriorating in my neck. And down towards my waist, I have bone growth, which are tumors growing on the bone themselves. I could wake up paralyzed from the neck down one morning. I could wake up paralyzed from the waist down one morning. Right now, they were wishing I was wearing a cervical collar. At 110 degrees in Florida, there's not going to be no cervical collar being worn down here. Absolutely not. We've been pushing this off because when I took the test initially, you go from green, like it's like a st upside down stop sign. You go from green to yellow to red. And these are blocks about, about two inches high on their scale as, as you're going through the machine. My scan started halfway through the yellow. I had no green whatsoever. It went halfway through the yellow, all the way through the red, and it went out over an inch past the red zone. This is why we've been putting it off for two years. I've been having a lot of pain in my neck, and my elbows, and my shoulders, and the, the, the joints are deteriorating, and sometimes, like my knees, are bad, it slips out of place. Even while I'm sleeping, I could turn in my sleep and my knee becomes, um, pops out of joint. And you gotta, I gotta push it back in myself. If anybody's ever had a dislocated shoulder playing football or sports, it's one of the most painful things you'll ever feel in your life. It feels like 
a broken bone and then hitting your funny bone as hard as you've ever hit in, in your life is the strangest sensation, but it is extremely painful. And I don't know anybody who's gone through that, pushing it back into place without screaming their brains out. Even the biggest men playing football, they're out there screaming on the football on, in the middle of the field when you're popping a shoulder back in. And it hurts, it hurts. And then imagine having to do it yourself, half asleep at three in the morning, because you gotta get it done. It cannot stay like that. You can pinch a nerve, lose the feeling in your leg, end up having to be operated on which I can no longer be operated on because I can no longer be put under anesthesia. It has no effect anymore. Uh, Painkillers stopped working over 10 years ago. So going to the dentist and having work done is quite the experience without Novocaine. Six shots, I'm still screaming. So they try to be extremely fast as possible for going and being tortured. <laughs> yeah, you tend to put that one off a little bit. Uh, my jaw is giving me a lot of grief lately. Uh, same things are here. My jaw becomes dislocated. Uh, a lot of the firemen wake up, they were yawning and some of them make funny faces while they're shaving their beard and stuff like that go like this to brush your teeth, open your mouth real wide, and you dislocate your jaw. That's probably more painful than a knee and a shoulder. I, up in the ear canal, I, ugh. you know, you get a toothache, it hurts the ear, it hurts here. That's, that's why I really don't want to go back. I also turned down having my tongue removed due to the cancer in the throat with the big giant lump you see here, okay? Um, makes it extremely hard to eat. Three years ago, I was put on a food restricted diet. This year, they've even restricted me more because of the growth and the swelling in my throat. Also, my stomach is not digesting food so much no more. So I'm not supposed to be eating chicken, no steak, no pork. That leaves me fish and hamburger meat, which is kind of acceptable because it's already mushed up and not so hard to digest. But going through that test, I had to, with the throat, eat five specific meals five days before. I could not alter or add anything different. They wanted to see how much food was being left undigested in my stomach there was a lot a lot they're not happy about me eating fish they're strictly i'm supposed to only eat frozen fish you know little fish sticks um but i had sushi the other day i took a shot i i had to eat it i haven't had it for maybe nine months now and we had a good old time last week <laughs> Uh, I bought two packs on the $5 day, which I'm going to go get one today. And um, I'm actually supposed to be eating baby food, applesauce. But the problem with that is you can't make smoothies. Smoothies. How do you make a smoothie without any fresh fruit or fresh vegetables? The frozen ones, when you put it in, come out a little way too watery. No more dairy at all. No milk, no nothing. That's just got yanked out last week. Uh, my calcium blood tests were through the roof again, which is the bones disintegrating, which turned into kidney stones, which I had to about a week and a half ago, finally passed. That's why I really haven't been filming. This is my 90 days was up, and now I'm into the sick month, number four. Every three months, for roughly three weeks, I get sick as the body goes through the cycle. This time, the kidney stone started it, but the breast uh, is acting up again. Uh, I have lobular and ductal breast cancer. Ductal breast cancer 
is not treatable. It's in the lymph node system and it's in the blood. Uh, you can't do IV infusions with deep vein thrombosis like this. Sometimes my blood is three times the volume it should be. And I have to go for days at a time, every single day, to the blood lab for bloodletting. Bloodletting is when they remove pints of blood at a time. Sometimes I'm there a half an hour, sometimes I'm there two hours, depending on how slow the blood drips out. We tried that for about a year before Richard died, and now I go sporadically when the volume level reaches a certain amount. We have to take it out. Uh, and with the arterial cirrhosis of the heart now, we now have to keep more on top of that. I just went back to him two days ago because I had to get a renewal on the antibiotics. I showed him what's going on with the breast and he sent me some new pills. Uh, instead of taking one, I had to take two to start and now I have to take three. Uh, my body does not make antibodies any longer and the antibodies that I get from the antibiotics are only lasting up to two to three hours. Normally you take these pills every six hours, sometimes eight. I went from six hours to four hours to now every three hours. He's considering doing it <clears throat> every two hours. How that's gonna work through the liver, we're not sure because the liver is not processing and uh, metabolizing the medicine anymore. So without your liver processing the medication, you're actually not even making antibodies at all. I'm not even sure what could these pills are doing to me at this point. They make me extremely sick, whether you take chemotherapy through the vein or through the mouth, because each chemotherapy, everybody thinks chemotherapy comes in an IV bag. It comes in both forms, because some people's veins are so destroyed by the chemotherapy that I had to go through twice for 96 straight days each, each time. I've done that twice now. The last time was 2015. I've managed to get away with that, but with the thickening of the blood, they can no longer even put a saline IV in just to flush me out. It, it, it doesn't go anywhere, it gets stuck, and it just causes more problems and actually blows out my veins and my whole hand turns black with the blood because they burst the vessel trying to push too much fluid through an already clogged vein. Uh, they're stretched very thin. It's like blowing up a balloon, water balloon. You blow up a balloon too big, it pops. Uh, these veins only stretch so far. They're made of very thin membrane. And if you ever seen anybody who looked like they had blood under their skin, it's because their veins are tearing and blood is seeping out. I had that three times, mostly in my hands and my arms from here down and then again on my legs. That's coming from the severe advanced stages of the osteoporosis. Osteopenia is when you're just starting to lose bone. So some places are good and some are bad. The other part that's a perilous thing besides your neck breaking <laughs> is your sternum. Your sternum holds your ribs together. It's a little bone right here that's right be where your heart lays up against. That bone is disintegrating rapidly. The only way to fix that is to put a plate in. It requires a tremendous long surgery, which is a life-threatening surgery uh, because of the amount of bone marrow that is escaped by breaking your ribs. While they're doing this, to try to put a plate in or some pins to hold your ribs together. This is one of the biggest reasons why I put this test off. Last time I was in the emergency room, the doctor looked at my x-ray and she just ripped open, oops, my, uh, my gown to see the hole that it's creating in between my breasts. 
And she looked at me like, like this. I said, oh, my sternum's collapsing. Yeah, I know. She goes, you know all about that? I said, yeah, I know all about that. Did you take a look at the neck? Like that? And, she, and she's like, oh my God. She said, what are we gonna do? I said, I don't know. What are we gonna do? You asking me? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I will probably do a live on Saturday. I don't know if I'm gonna feel much like filming for the next day or two. My nerves are a little on edge with having to go through this one more time and having to go through it alone, not coming home to Richard, being there. It was going to be a rough one. It was going to be hard. He was trying to give me enough time to get over my loss. And get my mind right. To be able to go through this. And screw up the courage to walk through that door one more time. Knowing it's going to be worse than it was before. I'm hoping it's at least holding steady. Is what I'm crossing my fingers about. But he was extremely upset with the last results. And he said that they were extremely worrisome. And little tears in his eyes. This poor guy, I feel, I feel sorry for my doctor every time we walk in the door because he doesn't know what to say. Because there isn't anything you can do. And that's probably the hardest part of what we're going through from being involved with 9-11 is that there's nothing they can do. The medication stops working. The, the medicine that I was taking put me in the hospital and put me in septic shock. I almost died in 2016 uh, and 17. 2020, I ate a banana and ended up in the hospital dying because my potassium was six times the limit. That's when we found out that I had arterial cirrhosis of all three valves. We found the tearing the last couple of months that I went for my last x-rays when I was driving back and forth from Jensen Beach coming up here for the doctor's appointments. We found two small tears and a sack of fluid around the heart, which congestive heart failure runs in the family. So already being predestined for this disease and then being poisoned by the chemicals and toxic fumes of 9-11 for nine consecutive months, standing there every single day in that burning smoke, being contaminated by the ash every single day helping wash off these firemen and the rescue workers and the demolition crews. But I volunteered to do it because I was already caught in the, in the ash cloud when the second tower fell. It was the second tower ash cloud that blew across. The first one went west and the second one blew east. I have those up on the Instagram account. I'll have to get them off my, they're on another laptop. I have to get that charged up and uh, get those pictures up to you here. Um, but there's no place to post photographs, kind of, but, oh, the community, yeah, I could put them on a post for you. <clears throat> I tried to send them from Instagram to YouTube and it doesn't work that way. Now I could send it from YouTube to Instagram, but I can't send them back. I don't understand why. Somehow I'm, I'm missing something, but for over a year now, I haven't found a way to get them from Instagram to YouTube. But I will get them up there for you. Uh, but I just really, really wanted to say thank you. I really do. I've lost almost every one of my closest friends due to that day. People who were like family to me are gone. People who were standing on the waterfront with us were gone. The man who was with my mother, helping me take 
my makeshift decontamination shower of bleach. Washing myself off in the backyard. Well, 200 people living in the building were watching out the window. <laughs> Standing there naked while my mother and Sal, he was a maintenance man who ended up dying six months after my mom. Known them for over 30 years, working with them. In the building, he was the painter and all around good guy. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He had, uh, he had prostate cancer and he hadn't really told anybody but my mother knew. That's why the two of them helped me with the sheet. My mother had multiple cancers from cervical to the breast. Everywhere I have kidneys, liver, everything. We were identical except for the cervical cancer. Uh, a few years ago, it reached my ovaries and my lady parts inside. So it's slow spreading due to the excessive amounts of radiation and that I received that day, but also we are overexposing me in some radiation machines, scan machines that normally you don't go through or you go through once, once a year. I'm going through once every three months just to add to, to slow down. Radiation treatments were the only thing that helped my problem. My father lived for 30, do you mind? My father lived for over 32 years with cancer. My mother lived for 31 years with her cancers, going through this overexposure of radiation. You can't use targeted because there's too many places too close together. Uh, it would take, you'd be a wreck. You couldn't do the targeted for the damage that it does to the skin you would be you would look like a burn victim you'd have fourth fifth degree burns all over your body uh the pictures and what i had seen that my dad had went through were horrendous so they went with a generalized just overexposing you with the most oldest machines they could find that are pretty much out of date because they give you cancer uh, there's a couple of machines that you can only go through if you have cancer because if you don't and they're not sure You never go through the what we call the big kahuna. I forget the name of this machine But you get locked up in a part of the hospital all by yourself like get smart with doors closing on you and no one's there You're all alone. There's no one on the other side of the glass wall talking to you because they're in another part of the hospital pressing buttons watching you in the room they can't even be in the, this little corner section of the hospital they're, they're like glass shield doors radioactive doors these big steel doors shut behind you with these giant radiation stickers all over everywhere red lights going off it's insane and that's usually in the very basement of the hospital in a far corner and it's quite the walk to get through a hospital to get to that room. But that's what we've been trying. And so far, it's been working. But at the onset of this, generally takes anywhere from 10 to 18 years to die once it starts. This just started in 2018. Didn't start 20 years ago with 9-11. When the first cancer started showing up was 2015, and that was in the breast. The lungs, the liver, the kidneys, that didn't start till 2018. And that's when Richard and I got the news in the car from the labs, it, the, the government labs, uh, LabCorp and Quest Laboratories, both in California, Utah and Nevada, three government laboratories had to agree, not just two, three, to agree with the blood test that Shans, number four, 
the number one rare cancer center in the United States, which is in Gainesville, in the University of Florida, the Gators, uh, were one of the only places besides New York and Stanford out in California where uh, LabCorp was. And um, they were the ones that tell me that the excessive amount of radiation in my blood is what was actually keeping me alive and slowing the staging process from stage one to stage two to stage three. Uh, so that's kind of it. But I wanted to explain why I haven't been on. Uh, what I'm up against on Monday. I will come on live on Monday night because I'm sure Again, they will not let me leave without the Melbourne Five coming in to explain what happened. And it took five doctors to explain the different points of what happened to me that day and what I was exposed to and how it affected different parts of my body. Just the act of me turning like this might have been better if I was just standing this way. Because as I turned, away from the blast of the plane when I felt the heat, I turned my back to the blast, which was where the radiation comes. It's like a beam of light. And it just went right through my spine, from the back of my head all the way down to my tailbone. If I had been standing sideways or front ways, it may have been a little bit better, but the direct hit hit me from the back of my head all the way down to my waist. And that's what we're going to be specifically looking at on Monday. So last time I had about seven lesions running from here to about the kidney level and then more down to the bottom. But it's from the kidneys up to the back of my head uh, where your head attaches to your, your neck is what they're most worried about. Uh, eventually the bones will be too brittle to hold your neck up and then you're stuck in a hard plastic molded collar that's molded to you to just hold your head up in the air like this <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen anybody with one of those I saw a man in Walgreens who had a fireman's t-shirt on I thought he was in his 60s maybe 70 and then I realized he's really only in say his late 40s or maybe 50s like I am, he just looks a lot older. And we looked at each other, I looked at him, you know, and he looked at me like, oh shit, you know. I said, 9-11, and I pointed to his thing. I said, he said, what are you gonna do? I said, nothing, you know. He said, we did, he said, I can't say I did it to myself, but I kinda did, you know. I, he said, we know the risks, right? I said, yeah. He said, that's, that's all God needed to know. And I think I'll end this here because I don't want to cry again. <laughs> but he was a nice man. We talked for a little while. And all right, I think that's it. I wanted to say thank you. This is actually going really long. We're going to see if I can get this one up. I'm doing this. Oh, this is also a trial run on the iPad, which I'm hoping that even without that one discount, I'm still going to be able to afford this. <laughs> I knew this crap was too good to be true. They always sucker you in and then take that away. This always happened to Richard, happened to his father, some friends of ours. They suck you in and say, yeah, 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 it's only gonna be yeah, $75 a month, uh-huh. Right now there's no Apple Care on here because that came with a different discount. So now that's gonna be an extra $20 a month. So I'm looking at a minimum extra 60 bucks a month right off the bat, which is gonna put me at the 120 mark, which I told them I could not go over. I could not go over $120 a month on this. And if it is, I gotta get the car fixed. And I'll go back to the cheap phone for a while, for a month, 
until I can get this turned back on again. I'm not even sure. I don't even really want to know about it until after Monday. I thought about going in, but I really don't want to get aggravated. My blood pressure has been, I've been keeping it copiostasis. Um, it's actually been a little low. It's been in the 90s and the 80s, which is par for the course. It's either very high or dropped very low. I was 80 over 40, then I was 70 over 50, then I was 90 over 45. So it's just, it's hovering under 100 now, which is good for me uh, because getting pissed off is not an option right now because the next time it goes over, I risk having a massive heart attack or an unrecoverable stroke, which will leave me unable to speak, swallow, eat, pee, I'll end up like Stephen Hawking, okay? And getting aggravated is just, that's out of the question. So, gonna be 420 for a while, trying to keep that down. Uh, and, that's it because blood pressure medication doesn't work. It stops your heart. It, it brings it down to, to 60 over 40 and that's way too low. We've tried that three times in the last couple of years and it has the same effect every time. So herbal remedies it is, he said. Uh, and I have made him now a true believer that he sees what that does and how much better off I am with it. Uh, as far as eating and being hungry and you know this this you're just nauseous and sweating and running a fever I run 102.7 all day long just all day long constantly running a fever this Jesus it's bad I'm already sweating all day long so everything else has been pretty cool uh, and I ordered uh, some stuff from Amazon, which I'm going to pick up. Thank you, sweetheart, Mrs. Kale. And uh, what I did was I ordered the, because I'm not supposed to have like fresh food anymore. Uh, anything prepackaged is okay. <laughs> I just gotta watch the salt content. Uh, and, uh, so what I did was I was I love those mountain house camping meals in the bag just to add water and I brought one to show him uh, he read the packaging and he said this is perfect this is what I mean I mean I want you freezer bitten as crappy as you can get without it being McDonald's uh, because of the cholesterol uh, cancer feeds off off of fat and oils uh, so if I can eat like that, he said that would be a good idea. So when Kale was nice enough to send me the Amazon gift card, I used that. Uh, they gave me a huge discount on like, I think it's enough for a month. It's either three weeks or four weeks. And then I ordered the the little stews, Dinty Moore stews, come in like a little container. You'll see, I'll, I'll do a little video tonight when I pick that up. It's coming sometime this afternoon, so I gotta sit outside UPS because it said it was coming at 10 o'clock. They close at 7, so I'm gonna be camped out somewhere else tonight uh, waiting for the Amazon truck to pull up. <laughs> oh my god. I give up. Um, so hopefully it'll be there early by 5. Usually they get their deliveries at 5. So I, I'm very excited about that because I wanted to do that here because the bread went moldy, oatmeal's having a hard time. It, it just, it's madness. It's just madness keeping food in here, uh, especially when I'm running in and out of the library trying to stay cold. Uh, there's not many trees in Florida in the parking lots. I don't know why. Uh, who wants to go food shopping and come out and put your food, your frozen food that you just bought in a car that's 150 degrees? Walmart, you know, it's not just saying for van life people to park under the trees all day. No, I'm talking about just going food shopping. You have to have a cooler with ice in the car just to go food shopping if you're more than 10 minutes from the house. 
because everything thaws out. Everything. You cannot keep frozen food in a car just to drive it home from the supermarket to your house. Uh, and that's that. So I'm very excited. This is like a really cool package idea. It says emergency family MRE meals. And yes, I'm after two years of two years of 9-11 and two and a half years of Hurricane Sandy <laughs> I got into like those MRE meals because <laughs> that's all we were eating um, besides Subways and pizza uh, but yes so I'll make another little video tonight on that and now we're at 45 minutes this is going to be a test I'm hoping this goes up. If not, I'm going to have to cut it short. I love you guys. I'll probably do a Saturday Night Live. How's that? And then I'll see you guys again on Monday night. I think that'll be okay. Give me a little little morale boost on Saturday for Monday. And, um, okay. Let's check this out. Let's see if we can do a 45-minute video. What do we have to do? 46 minutes, 10 seconds. All right. I love you guys. I got to get this off because I'm going to die. And uh, even with the nice breeze that's coming through, it's still, it's a warm breeze. Uh, so, yeah. Going to soak myself with my handy dandy. Yeah, and I, I, want, I, I want promotions from Home Depot. That's another thing. Home Depot and Walmart don't sponsor Wall Life. Wall Life. Yeah, Wall Life. There you go. Van Life, people. Zeep. Look, he looks like a duck. This is Van Lifer's best friend, if he ain't got the air conditioning. Uh, so I figure we only have a few more weeks to go. If I can muddle through the next six weeks, come September, it'll start even 85 will feel good. You know, this 98 degrees is a bit much, but the library has been a help and the women have been extremely lovely at all the libraries because they all talk to each other. They wave to me as they come in. They're like, come on, we got an empty room. Hurry up, get in. So I don't have to sit outside at one of the tables because it's, it's hard for me to sit like this for any exterior, extended period of time. Charging this little dude up takes three hours. Right now it's at 40%, so I'm trying really hard not to use it and just use my little Walmart fans uh, to cool off with these guys. Screw it, let's see if we can do an hour. Okay, I have three of these charged for today and I still have 40% left to run the big bad boy here uh, for tonight, but I will have to zip back ooh, to them probably in about an hour from now uh, to get that charged up so I can use that fan. It's going to be humid tonight and raining again, which I see the clouds are coming. We already had a rainstorm this morning and I got a brand new for $5 in the $5 store. You see this? This is like a five foot long selfie. It keeps going. It's so big I can't open it in the car. But it also has Bluetooth on it. There's a little button that you sync it to your phone and you can hit play and record right here on the stick. And it's a really nice one. And then this opens up, of course, to the obligatory tripod thing, which it's really hard to open, but it stayed pretty well, so I really like it. It's pretty neat. This is where I'm using on the live streams. I put it sideways because why? You make a selfie stick, but the phone that sits sideways. All your videos are sideways, so you have to hold it this way all the time, which is really annoying. Holding your arm out like this to get the shot, why can't you hold it this way? Somebody can tell me which way to flip that camera around so I don't have to be doing this all day <laughs> and I could just do this but I see everybody doing this and holding it like this so I'm assuming they don't make one that holds it the other way so someone out there make it hold it the other way I thought of trying to fix that but you really can't 
So, but I like this guy. He's been holding you guys and doing right by the live streams. Um, okay, and I think that's the last little thing. I'll do a short on this little 200 amp hour battery. Uh, it's enough to charge your headphones. Uh, it only charged, this takes almost three hours to charge. It charged for an hour and a half, so it got it halfway, which isn't bad in an emergency, but that's more to charge your doodads, your wireless headphones, stupid stuff like that, okay? It's not meant to charge. Don't anybody count on a two thousand, those little tiny batteries, unless you get the, the Nokia or, you know, the ones that you could jumpstart a car with. Yeah, those are fine. But these little ones that look like Hershey Kisses and teddy bears, and they won't even charge the cell phone. It's only for to charge your accessories for the phone. Uh, because this is only four watts, that little fan. The phones take 25 watts on here to charge. So anything five, I'd say eight watts or lower, you could charge on that but you're only gonna get an hour to an hour and a half charge on it, that's it. Okay, 51 minutes and counting. Let's see if this actually works. Fingers crossed. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Happy hump day. Bye.